Hi everyone. Once again, this is Real Talk for Real Estate. I'm Michelle Clippert in Montrose, Colorado at the Real Estate Store. And this is... I'm Peggy Vinoyka, Montrose, um, Colorado, the Real Estate Store. Here we are. So we have... Actually, Peg, it's, it's a very serious conversation. And it is because you and I are something different in our education than a lot of people. We are. So um, Peg and I are senior specialists. And that's just one of the tools in our tool bag. Yes. yes. But there are reasons that we take that additional education and we have some experience behind us for that education. And we just wanted to dive in a little bit of why would you want to use a senior specialist and what makes Peg and I different? Like, right. how are we different? And you know, it's interesting, I can tell you, as you'll tell me, by personal experience, I started out in a situation with um, a relative that was older than me, older than a lot of other others in the family, and did not have the experience, the questions, the answers, the contacts, muddled through it, knew the real estate part of it, so important to have someone with those conversations. Yes. And it, and it adds to the element of the human condition. Absolutely. Which we're all we're all getting older. Yeah. We get yeah. it. But there's so many things that come into play personally um, and not many people know about my story but I too um, um, my husband's parents lived with us for nine and a half years. And so I saw personally um, the changes in aging. Yeah. Um, the needs of their space, right. uh, the needs of our space, and how um, it's not always uh, the prettiest picture. It's not. And the thing that I started grasping is I need more education, which I got my senior specialist in. Right. And it's ways to handle the conversation because, um, Peg, as you know, that um, – Back in the day, people would live in their homes for like 45 years or something. And they could be on the old homestead or right, right. two-story or not adapting to change or lifestyle changes or body changes or aging. Right. Right. And they just stuck it out. But our generation is very different now, the boomers. They are. We're making choices to say yeah. we want to live as long as possible in a certain area. Right. And some of these tools are the important tools that will get us there because that's the changing landscape in real estate. It is. But not only um, some of the folks that have been in their homes for eons, right. pardon me, um, it was almost like a default to them. They didn't know where to go for help, where to go for advice, suggestions. Well, they know where to go. you're exactly right because I'm going to give you a, another tidbit about me is that my mother, um, a single mother, uh, living in Gunnison, Colorado, raised five girls. We were all teenagers. Scary that were in itself. Scary in itself. But with that, um, she had MS. And so she, you know, for us uh, going through this transition, transition with her, mm -hmm. and I know what home ownership meant to her. Yeah. And I know, and I saw her get into a home, and I also saw her physically have to leave that home. Right. And what I learned in that time frame is that the conversation was never started about what's the next step. We see this coming. Yes, yes. We didn't have the internet. You could say that we were inexperienced or that we right. were not advised. And the word was really not, not ill-advised. No. We didn't have any advice. And uh, my sisters and I waited too long Right. to get a lot of this information because then she had a dementia set in, right. her physical ability, and we ended up having to uh, ombudsmans and right. things right. like that to care for her. Had we had some advice from some sons of specialists to help us, whether it was real estate or not, to say, here are the avenues to take, and here's the start of a conversation. And I can say you're absolutely right. I have had, over the years, I've had people 
families come to me and say, we just don't know where to start. Right. We don't know what the first question is. We don't want to make mom mad. We don't want to make dad mad. We know something needs to be done, but we honestly don't have a clue what to do. Right. Right. And so some of those things and guys, it doesn't always turn out pretty. I'm going to tell you right now, both personal experience as well as you can see things in people's futures. But if we can just somehow prepare the conversation yes and not always are they moving right correct sometimes oh. the whole idea is the consulting them to say you need to stay in your mm -hmm. home you need to make this more user friendly for your age right. or right. disability or whatever may match that but once again the conversation has to start and it does and that's what we have today yes we have some great successful yes conversation starters and they really are um, I'm going to show you it's it's a paper that says starting the conversation and that is exactly what this is and the idea of starting this conversation this could be years before either folks or sister sibling husband um, wife I mean anyone who's going to need a lifestyle change this could be years before this happens but if we don't start the conversation then we don't know what people's wishes are that's right and you know starting a conversation doesn't mean it needs to end with a decision today correct correct have a conversation just visit about it but how many times have you and I gone into homes and asked senior specialists and we'll be with the kids and they will tell us we're afraid to have that conversation. Yeah. Uh, we want a third party to have that conversation and sometimes that's completely valid. But what we've put together is a starting the conversation page and we'll have it on our website we'll have it on the Facebook page you can come into the real estate store I mean this is stuff that really we all need to know how to ease this in and what it is is it's you give it to the person or persons that you foresee may have to have a lifestyle change because of either ageism or, um, or disability, disability or, or, or yeah, sickness yeah. or surgeries, right. whatever it is, it's going to fit in that same category because it empowers them to make that next decision. So with these questions, they are checking the box that is most important to them. Right. And you know, just as that person would review it, it's a lot of it is like a lot of the things we run into in real estate. People will say, you know, how many times have you have you heard someone say, but well, do you have any questions? Right. And someone says, I don't know the questions to ask. Right, correct. That pegs hit it on the head. Yeah. Right there. So this gives you this a hint. gives a start oh, for those questions and they are marking it. So there is a box, like the first box. Yep. If this was important to them in their current state, now right. no matter where that is, right. in their current state, the one of the boxes says to remain as independent as possible for as long as possible. Now is oh. Who yeah, wouldn't who wouldn't that? check that? Well, I guess if if you wanted more communal living or something like that, maybe right. that wouldn't be it. But majority of the boomers, I would say, would be checking this box. Right. They would right. be checking. But the the way that happened again, that's the conversation mm -hmm. that needs to happen with whatever person, whatever couple it is, right. and whoever is part of their family unit. Right, and it could be friends. I mean, many times we don't have families of our unit. We have friends, confidants, pastors. I mean, we have a lot of people in our sphere who give us that different kind of advice. Mm -hmm. And the next question, which they could choose, again, so that's starting a conversation already. If, if they choose that, your conversation might be mom or dad, uh, honey, my spouse. Um, Let's think of how we can make your life so you can live as long as possible in your situation. I mean, it really starts a dialogue. It does. It does. It's, and that's what this is all about. Right. It's dialogue. It's dialogue. Mm -hmm. So the other is to remain healthy and active. Well, some people don't want to be active. We know that. Maybe right. healthy is one of them. Yeah. yeah. But once again, they might circle one and not the other. <laughs> Because it starts our conversation yes. once again. 
And um, then it goes on to someone living in their home as long as possible. And I mean living in that home as long as possible. So, it, you know, once again, depending on what are, you know, if you had two knee replacements and you couldn't get up and down your stairs, but you have to make that decision, can I modify this house to live in here as long as possible, or do I sell and go on to the next, yeah. which will make me independent? Exactly. And, you know, so many times people say, well, you know, I've lived here for 30 years, 50 years, choose a number, and I want to stay here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at the reality of what it's going to take, Uncle George, for you to stay here. Right. Again, starting the conversation. Right. Oh, well, I didn't know we were going to have to do that. So what are my other options? The conversation has been yes. started. Yes, and again, guys, I'm coming back to this. This is not a one moment, like Peg said, you're deciding. These are things that we plan for. Many times I will go to a senior home and say, where do you see yourself in five years? Now, five years to some, is you may feel like you're going to be the same. Five years to others, others. may mean I'm a whole different person. Right. Like, so how do we prepare for that? How do we prepare for that? Again, coming back to the human condition. But boomers are not just thinking about staying in their homes. They have social lives as well. And so some of these things may be around that. Like one question is to focus on a hobby. And, you know, I, I thought that was so very interesting and appropriate when I saw that on this list. I just think that's so important. Yes. So many people when they retire or they're forced to retire, it's almost like life has stopped. Right. Life hasn't stopped. Right. But you have to get another avenue started again. Right. And that's the hobby or the design. And I like that on there too because they would be checking it personally. Absolutely. And they, maybe they know. not have hobbies right now, but if they're checking yeah. that, that's a real conversation of how are we going to get you to that place to get that hobby yeah. and, and make you enjoy life even all the more fuller and to work as long as possible. I mean, gosh, right. uh, go to Home Depot. You'll see a guy there that I love that guy. And he's been there forever. And I'm thinking, how old is that gentleman? And could be, I don't know, he could be way into his 90s. He could be, but he always says he Always hello. says hello. And wouldn't that be your goal to live as, to work as long as possible? Be able to do it? Maybe you like to be social. Maybe you like you to do that. like to get around part of the conversation yes and one is also uh, becoming involved in the community um, because many times our retirees will have more time yes and then finally you're able to um, exercise the rights of maybe being involved in the city council I mean right. things that maybe your young working mothers and fathers cannot do this really gives a good opportunity once again discussion discussion about it. absolutely discussion and um, to remain as financially independent as possible. Now, that's a deep conversation. Yes. But still, one, that's very valid. If they're choosing that, that's a great conversation. Well, how are you going to do that? Right. How are you going to maintain that? Do you need a specialist to help you to do that? Right. A financial advisor, a family member, or whatever it is. Because, the, again, they're checking these. These are the most important things to yeah. them. And, you know, that is that is so important for someone that is nearing a possible life change is because they are the ones that are taking control. Yes, yes. They're checking the boxes. You're not checking them for them. Yes, because it's their it's their party. The, yeah, this is their party, and they're thinking about this is what I want to do, and this yeah. is what I'm thinking about. And it also goes into taking classes, which again, hobby classes, you know, just continuously learning. Oh, I know. That's great. I mean, we can. you can teach them how to do that online. You can, I mean, if they physically can't get to the next step. But this is about lifestyle. Yes. So you see, can, can we centralize that into a house or something? No, no this is a bigger conversation than yeah. that. This goes further. But if it comes to the physical inability or ability to change, to, do, to get around some of these things, mm -hmm. if you're far in the country and your whole desire is to take classes, maybe you need to yeah. live closer to the college or yeah. whatever it is that helps you to do those things. And right. again, it's right. conversation. Well, and you know, um, it's, it's about, I know you've got this, and it says personal future, which is absolutely correct, but it truly is reevaluating your entire lifestyle. Yes, yes. And it's a conversation we all wish. I mean, we all think about it. Do we, we not do. all have dreams and say, 
gosh, I hope I travel more next year, or I hope I learn something. I mean, it's just, it's no different at this age than another age. No. We're just directing the conversation so we make sure that um, those people have a voice. Absolutely. A Absolutely. voice in how it's going to play out. So important. Yeah, really important. And then also, like, to move closer to my family. We're, it's not like the old days where everybody lives next same door, house same house, house, you know, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so if your extended family, if you're the only one left, left in the community and your extended family is elsewhere, that's, that's a valid conversation. It's a conversation. Do you want to be closer? Yeah, not. Yes. And again, they're checking it. So know, they, right? may not, they may say, no, I'm yeah, not going over there. <laughs> yeah. And, um, also to relocate to a smaller home. Now, I have a personal experience in this. I'm selling my house. Huh. Yeah. And um, we're going from close to 4,000 square feet to we will be building somewhere around 2,500 square huh. feet. It's going to be manageable for me. Right. It's going to be manageable. And you know, and you know what else? Yes. Dave and I also have been on a property 38 years. Oh, my gosh. That should be illegal, by the way. <laughs> And we sold, and we got rid of all the treasures, which mm -hmm. were, it was not, not easy. Right. And now we are in a much smaller property, and we are going through exactly what this is. Yes. So yes, we both understand and have personal experience. Right, right. And then, you know, it's got a, a couple of things, like to retire in a different place, um, to travel, and to be able to help grandchildren or their children. Right. In a nutshell, is this about lifestyle? Absolutely. How do Peg and I fit in? Is because we are that third party that that conversation may end up at. And I much rather have you start the conversation than us be the ones that have to start it for them. And will we start it for you? Sure, we'll start for you if you request us to. But if you're like me and you started that conversation way too late, um, there, you can't get the power of attorney when they are all, do not have all their senses. No. You can't do the things that you need to do on their behalf when because, you do, because we did not have the conversation. And that's didn't exactly. Start. You don't know what that is. You don't, didn't know what that is. You know, honestly. So I'm begging you to take this information that Peg and I are talking about. This um, will be on our, uh, both our website and our Facebook page. But if you really need to break ice somehow, please tag someone you know. Put this in their message box. Make it personal and say, can we have this conversation? Right. Can we do this? And I assure you that you will be further off ahead than anybody. Oh, yes. And this, in a nutshell, this human condition is why Peg and I chose to put one more thing in our toolbox, which is being a senior specialist in real estate, because we know seniors need different care. And we want to thank you for being a part of this, but we have a couple of announcements to make, too. Is um, You have one. I do have one, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, last week at our Real Talk for Real Estate, um, we had a, a, a really nice gentleman here from the um, city of Montrose, and he and we talked about the hazardous waste that um, uh, collection event that is going to be going on. I want to re re um, report it again and remind everyone it's September 7th. This is at the um, city public works on 6450 Road, which is just north of the bypass. Right, right. Now, everything, this is um, this is city and county of Montrose, so it's a pretty big event. It has been going on only every two years. If they get enough um, participation in it, it will go on every year. Great. So there are so many things that new homeowners and new sellers and right. old sellers you bring your paint you bring your aerosol you bring pesticides all those, all those kinds of things yeah, yeah. that and you can bring there we also have this on our website yes. straight. Here we go. as well as the county's website but i just went on there so i was either mine okay, okay good so, you know, good and you can see it on our facebook page yeah. too so keep, so keep in mind i think that is a really good uh, public information to have 
And the other thing is um, Peg and I are not the only senior specialist at the real estate store. We were proud that we have several of us. And we will see you at Beacon Fest. And so we will have um, a booth set up there at Beacon yes. Fest. Beacon Fest will be held, and it's for our boomers and our seniors, and it will be held on September the 19th. It is at the Montrose Pavilion. Now, is that, that's a Friday? No, it's a Thursday. A Thursday, mm -hmm. okay. And, Thursday the 19th. And it will be held from 9 to 2. 9 to 2. Everybody can go home and take naps. There you go. Because <laughs> I'm going to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You will see us there. We and have we'll some great there. information, and we will have these available for you Good. starting the conversation. Just come on by, pick one up, and again, I beg of you, put this in a message in a message box. If a box if someone you know um, uses the internet or Facebook or something like that, um, start that conversation. Absolutely. Let us let us break the ice for you, and let's go forward with that. And yeah. so, thank you once again for being a part part of Real Talk for Real Estate here in Montrose, Colorado. And on behalf of Peg Evanoike and myself, we thank you for attending and we will see you on Friday for any open houses and next week at the same time. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.